What's going on, football fans? It's your boy J.R. Clark coming back once again with another rendition of the Pound for Pound. Boy, I wish I had happier news or I could be more pessimistic or more optimistic, rather. I wish I could be talking about a five-game win streak that we should be on. But alas, you know, boys couldn't figure it out again. Lose against the Browns. Lose against the damn Cowboys. 22-19. At home. Once again, couldn't finish in the fourth quarter. Whether it be the defense giving it up. Or Dan Quinn making a a boneheaded decision. Either way, I saw an alarming stat talking about in four years, we've had 12 fourth quarter blown games. Man, that's... uh, that makes me sick. Now, by no means am I calling for Dan Quinn's head because I just don't see anybody else out there right now that I realistically could rather have. You know, yeah, you could pie in the sky all you want to with, you know, guys like Sean McVay or or even Peyton, Sean Payton, but, I mean, you ain't going to get those guys right now. So there's no sense in even thinking about that direction, in my opinion. But the more disturbing thing that that has bothered me in these recent or this season is the subpar play of of Trufant and Alford. I mean, what is going on with those two? You know, at one point in time, Trufant was considered one of the better corners in the in the league, and you only had to worry about a holding penalty from Alford every now and again. I mean, now these jokers are getting repeatedly burnt and making boneheaded decisions or boneheaded plays, panicking and grabbing folks. And it's really telling how both of them have said repeatedly that they should have more interceptions by now. And you know what? For the money we're paying them, yes. They should both have more interceptions by now. You could have salted some of these games away and maybe not blown a fourth quarter lead or a chance at a fourth quarter comeback had you just took the daggum ball away. But no, they apparently don't spend any time with the jugs machine. I'm thinking about starting a GoFundMe page to get Trufon his own personal jugs machine. Because that joker has got some stone hands. I tend to try not to criticize players but this season has really started to tax me on our team in general. And it's sad to say, and I hate to say it like that, but it's the case. How are you going to go from the first part of this season, you know, scoring an average of 28, 29 points a game, to the last two games you can't get over 20 points? Now look, <clears throat> Don't get me wrong. I know that Ben Garland and Wes Schweitzer are not Andy Levitri and Brandon Fusco. Because if they were Andy Levitri and Brandon Fusco, you wouldn't have restructured Andy Levitri's contract and went out and signed Fusco. So I'm not sitting here saying that we should produce the same level when you have yet more starters out of the freaking lineup But damn it, guys, I'm talking about the Washington game was our most complete game we have played probably in two seasons. And you thought the team was making a turn. You thought, okay, they have got some stuff figured out. Maybe these, you know, defense needed time to gel. You know, that's what I was telling myself. And and all of a sudden, and then you go and have the stinker of the Browns game. And then the stinker at home with Dallas. Not to mention that Thursday night, in a few short days, we go to frickin' Stinky Town in New Orleans and play that gum, uh, the Saints, which I'm gonna go ahead and call it, is a loss. Full on. I mean, there ain't no way we're going down to New Orleans on a short week on Thanksgiving, playing the Saints who are freaking 9-1 and one and just demolishing people and going to get a win. Now, I hope, I hope that I'm going to eat crow 
on off of that statement. But but folks, I just I don't see it. I don't I, I don't see it. Yeah, you could possibly get Deion Jones back this coming week, but one man ain't gonna make much of a difference, especially one man who ain't played since week one. And who's only played three quarters. Now that is unless your boy Vic Beasley has decided to actually start playing football halfway through the daggum season. He got two sacks on Prescott uh, Sunday, so maybe he woke up and is going to actually try to prove that he's worth keeping around because at this junction, I'd be just willing in the offseason to trade him for a fourth or fifth round pick. Again, if y'all been listening to me for these past two seasons that I've been doing this, y'all know I don't try to do. I don't try to get on these tirades. I don't try to to say the same crap that these talking heads on the radio and national media and all these blogs say. I try to give you a different perspective, <clears throat> but man, <clears throat> I'm having a real hard time coming up with any other perspective than what in God's name do we have to do. To turn the fortunes of this team around. I mean, you got a whole new coaching staff with almost an entire new defense with the same daggum problems that I've been seeing since 08. You know, I mean, we can't get to the daggum quarterback. You, your defense can't take over the daggum game. Your offense can't take over the daggum game. And I just don't understand. I don't get it. It don't make no sense to me. I'm a very logically, you know, minded person. And my logic just can't come up with why it's the exact same. Now, for you folks who want to pat, you know, you know, point at, you know, Matt Ryan not being a game changer. I, I'm going to go ahead and call it. I'm done defending him. And I like him. I think he's the best quarterback we've ever had. And I think a lot of y'all ain't going to realize how good we got it with our quarterback position until he's gone. Okay? We could be Washington, whose quarterback's got a broke ankle. Or you could, you know, be Detroit, who, you know, has got a mediocre quarterback that they paid a lot of money to. Hell, some people feel like we got a mediocre quarterback that we paid a lot of money to. But at least our quarterback has been to the Super Bowl and won an MVP. So, whatever. I mean, you could be Jacksonville, who's, you know, got Blake Bortles as their quarterback. You know what I mean? So we could have it a lot worse is what I'm trying to get at. So to me, Matt Ryan is not our problem. You know, I don't know if our problem is, you know, solely on the coaching staff or if it's the fact that you're finally seeing that, that Tevin Coleman just truly isn't a workhorse back, isn't truly a lead back like Devontae is. Or Devontae was. Hell, I don't know what Devontae is anymore. He done been injured so much that I'm just not so sure. So, you know, the run game doesn't seem like they can get it going. I don't know if that has to do with, you know, the two guards, you know, not being up to par. Or, you know, what the deal is. Or them not trusting the guards. Hell, I don't know. All I know is as a Falcons fan right now, I'm as frustrated as I have been since right before we fired Mike Smith. The years that you know, the year that we went four and twelve, and what six and ten, I think is what the other one was. I, those were some frustrating years. And when we hired Quinn, I didn't think that we were going to have to deal with the, that again, or at least not as soon. You know. And it sucks that two years removed from a Super Bowl, we're floundering. And it feels like we're stuck in mud. And it's hard for me to lay blame at any one thing. This year has been a myriad of things. You know, you've had the defensive starters going down. You've had the, you know, offensive starters going down. I know of right now, I know of at least... What, five starters on IR? But, hell, with that being said, Green Bay went and won the Super Bowl with half their damn team on IR. So, I don't know, man. It's 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 a crap situation that we're in. 
Part of me wants to be optimistic and say, oh, well, we're going to be better next year. Or, you know, look at all these people who are getting experience this year. Well, part of me really wants to wonder what's going through Dan Quinn's head when he's making some of these late-game decisions. And why are we only rushing three when Prescott's been shown more times than not he gets flustered when you blitz him? So why aren't we blitzing him? Why aren't we sending him the house? Why are, why are we letting him get into field goal range in the fourth quarter to kick a damn field goal and win the game? I mean, it's getting to be inexcusable. And I hate that I'm already making those statements four years into Dan Quinn's tenure and two years removed from the Super Bowl. You know, Dan Quinn talks about finishing. It doesn't seem like Dan Quinn knows how to finish. And that sucks. That sucks real bad. But if that's the case, then we need to hire the next, you know, bright mind, whether it be a defensive coordinator or an offensive coordinator, head, you know, to turn head coach or, you know, the next young gun, the next McVay. You know, we need to hire somebody who can be dominant. I know that sounds simple. I don't know how to find that person. If there was a recipe to find that person, every NFL team would have a dominant coach. But right now, I really feel like our coaching staff is letting us down. And that sucks. Well, hopefully we won't get too embarrassed Thursday night. Hopefully, as past has shown us that records be damned when it comes to the Saints and the Falcons. It tends to be a crazy game. So hopefully we can actually put up a fight and, you know, come out of New Orleans with a win, if it's a miracle, but at least come out of New Orleans not beaten and bedraggled like the last three or four opponents they've had. So that's all I got for you. Sorry it's kind of ranty tonight. I try not to make it that way. That's just the way it came out. Y'all have a good night, Falcons fans. And as always, rise up.